my husband and I have been involved in the sheep industry our whole lives. Um, I am the current past president of ASI, American Sheep Industry, um, and um, have been a member of the board now for 11 years. So um, our life has, um, our lives have um, evolved around trying to make positive change in the sheep industry. You know, genetics is, is our one avenue that, that we know we're not competitive with other nations. And um, it, all of us that are progressive sheep producers know that we have to improve. And so we are, um, we firmly believe in the National Sheep Improvement Program, um, ha have had our flock enrolled for many years. And um, when it comes to ASI, through the Let's Grow program, they invested a lot of money in trying to improve um, agriculture, sheep production in America. And um, one of the areas that I particularly felt strongly about supporting were, were genetics. And so that's, I think, was the beginning of my involvement. Absolutely. Um, you know, we're a very small industry, as we all know, and um, we, we have some very progressive producers that have just embraced breeding values. But then we have a whole another ne segment that um, they either don't understand it, they're not interested, they don't see the value in it. And, and so I think it's up to us as leaders for us to promote genetics and, and, and promote genetic improvement. And it was um, on a concept that five progressive producers, you being one of them, um, said we need, to, we need to get genetics out in the forefront and we need to network and with um, progressive producers, with um, our university people, with our ARS researchers, and we need to be all on the same page. And I, I think that was the beginning of it. And as far as ASI involvement, I happened to be president when, when Sheep Genetics uh, was started. And um, I think ASI felt like, golly, we got five progressive producers that have bought into this concept. And we as the National Sheep Organization should be promoting that. And I think that's why they embraced uh, Sheep Genetics USA. Oh, I happen to be married to one. His name's Bill Schultz, <laughs> and uh, Tom Boyer, uh, you Rusty, uh, Ben LaFelt, and Brad Boner. Five great minds, and I remember those phone calls all during COVID that uh, you had all that all the five of you had on a regular basis to to try to work out, you know, the the kinks of a new organization. And um, it's uh, I'm very proud of Sheep Genetics USA. We 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 got to keep moving forward, and I, I think you. You folks are doing it with the Young Guns program. Um, I, I, I think there's opportunities. I, I just think uh, we, we as a nation have to realize that we've got to buy into genetic improvement. You know, our, our lambing rate is still the same <laughs> as it's been <laughs> forever. That's an embarrassment. And, um, and there's pockets of our, our industry that are, are so far advanced and then there's pockets of our industry that have, are doing exactly the same way, same production system that they've done for years. Dr. Andrew Weaver um, is in this room as we're talking today and um, with the emphasis on, on the solar grazing, the number of ewes they're talking about needing for solar grazing. I'm telling you the opportunities for genetics is, is endless. So I've, I'm absolutely proud to be a part of it. And um, of course, my husband, it's his passion. And uh, so it's, it's something we talk about probably every night at the dinner table. I think we've done an outstanding job of networking in the last few years. Um, I, I think our, we, we're closer to our ARS researchers than I think we've ever been in, in our time in the sheep industry. Um, you talk to those folks on a, on a regular basis. Uh, National Sheep Improvement Program, um, people like Dr. Weaver. Um, I, I think having those interactions have been, just been great. You know, we're, we're recognizing Dr. Ron Lewis. This, this conversation, can't, can't, we can't let that go by without saying what he's done for genetics in the United States. And we're recognizing him this year at, at convention. And um, those are connections that I think are invaluable for the future of our industry. That's a mixed bag. I, uh, 
I, I thought adoption of NSIP records would, would be a little quicker than it has been. Um, I think we have a core group of seed stock producers that have really bought into it, especially those in the Katahdin breed. And, um, but our commercial people have not embraced it as much as I'd hoped. Um, again, I'm talking about convention because that's where we are today, but um, we're, we're honoring um, Matt Kyle, who um, is an innovator in upstate New York. And, and he does something I think that many of our commercial people should do. He has two seed stock producers that he works with regularly and, and they provide him with the rams that he needs for his production system. I mean, it's not like the seed stock producers are creating these rams and then just hoping that they work for someone. It's the commercial person saying, I need this, the seed stock person providing those rams. And that model, we need to embrace that model. I, I, I think there's real potential there. I think that we, and I'm probably going to cry a little, but I think we have some of the most intelligent, great animal science people in the sheep industry that we could ever ask for right now. And um, uh, whether they're researchers, whether they're our teachers, whether there's people like you, whether there's the progressive producers, um, and we need to make sure that all that intellect is being used and in a positive manner because I, I don't I think we're in great shape as far as as our, our resources right now um, besides the money part <laughs> so thank you Rusty for all that you do um, for our industry and um, we just have to continue to work together <laughs>